Now I'm just softening out some of the areas of the sky there. But we're just standing out a little bit too much to me. Get, clean the brush a bit. Just tidying up a few little spots there where I can see some brush marks and so on. Like so. Very good. So now we've got some nice fluffy white clouds. There's a few parts here where the paint's a little bit stronger. Um, it makes it stand out a little bit at the edge. But we're overall, you know, we've got this nice sort of soft, breezy effect on these clouds, which is what we're looking for. And just standing back and reassessing. But I think we're pretty happy with those overall. Okay, so I think what we need to do is get our water in um, from here back up. So to do that, I'm going to take my big brush again. This time we're going to paint horizontal strokes and we'll go to about here because I'm going to have my land coming in here. Back to the phthalo blue. Okay, we want it strongest at the bottom of the painting. In other words, closest to us. So I'm just picking up some of that phthalo blue on the brush. Getting just a touch of thinner in it. Okay, and this time we just want to paint it in horizontal um, strokes like so. Okay, as it gets up a bit higher, as I said, you don't have to go too far over that side. As it gets up a bit higher, I'm just going to add a bit, bit of um, titanium white to the mix. We want it to, to lighten right off as it gets towards the horizon line. Okay. So, as you can see, this is a variation on what Bob Ross and Bill Alexander taught. Um, I don't like to copy them exactly, even though we use a lot of their techniques. I um, also like to add our own flavor, do our own sort of subjects and things like that at more art school. Okay, now that's actually got a little bit of, um, bit of variety in that land there, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, Think that we will run with that. I'll add some more details into the water um, a bit later on when that has a chance to dry off. What I will do though is just dry that brush off a little bit there and just soften out a few spots there. In fact looking at it I really don't need to soften out too much of it. Overall I'm, I'm quite happy with that actually. So let's move on to our next um, next step. Okay, our next step in this painting is to get in that uh, distant land and, and the islands that we're going to do. We're going to bring them across to about two thirds of the way here, and then I'll bring in some land in the front here. Um, so we set that island as far back as we can. I'm going to use our um, palette knife here. What I want is just a, uh, a dark sort of value. So I'm going to take our ultramarine blue, just a touch of it. We'll take some uh, yellow ochre and a bit of the alizarin crimson. I'll mix that up there. A bit more blue. I want this to be on the blue side because as you know the further things are away in the distance the bluer they become. Mainly because um, from an aerial perspective point of view as things move in the distance the yellow drops out. So you've got your three primary colors blue, red and yellow. Everything in the foreground is made up of those colors but if you go out into the distance the yellow disappears first and things start to take on more of a mauve atmospheric um, color and then go away even further and the red disappears out of the spectrum and you're just left with blue and that's where you see those light hazy blue mountains and things in the distance. So I want this to be on the blue side, this mix that I'm making up here and uh, take some titanium white into it. I've actually mixed it up too dark. Okay, see that? That's almost gone to a gray. So I'll take, and I've just put it to one side, I'll take this blue here and a bit more white and just picking up a little bit of that grey. Okay. Now what we'll do, we'll apply that up onto the, um, onto the canvas and if it doesn't look right then we'll just readjust it, that's no problem. Um, one of the things that I dislike about the um, method taught by Bob Ross and Bill Alexander is that they never show you what to do when you make mistakes. So. Um, if you don't get it on the canvas right first up, there's very little correction taught. Whereas good painters know 
that they put something up on the canvas and it's the wrong value, um, the wrong color, wrong hue, that they can then correct that. Okay, So that's what we try and teach at More Art School. One inch brush, just taking up some of that mix and picking our horizon line through here. Okay, Somewhere there, we'll just run the base of our islands in and then we can run them up like so. Now these are off in the distance, these islands, so we don't want them too too large. Okay. Maybe we'll make that one just a little bit bigger. And notice that I'm getting the edges a bit rough. We don't want perfect edges. Um, it's like that one's just too uniform in shape, so I'll push out out a little bit there with the um, try and keep a variety in your edges to keep it interesting and um, they'll look more convincing that way okay just adding some dark a bit more dark value in there into just one side of the of those uh, islands there Okay, just to give it some volume and shape. So that darker value that I mixed before, I'm not wasting that. I'm actually going to uh, use that on the dark side. So the light will be coming from over on the left-hand side, which is consistent with the clouds there. Okay, and when we put the um, palm branches in there, it'll be consistent with that as well. Okay, we'll just join that up. like so. Okay, now what we could do is um, just work on the light side a little bit more. So I'll get more ultramarine blue, titanium white, and just work that in. Now, you know, obviously Bob Ross and Bill would have used their painting knife which you could do for this. Um, I'm just using the one inch brush because it's just as easy to use that. A lot of people struggle with the painting knife, especially when they first start out. So if that's the case, just use the one inch brush. No, oh, yeah, it's fine. Tidy up along the edges there. Okay, now we'll use the uh, palette knife for the next step. What I'm going to do is just take some of the yellow ochre. Okay, and I'll, do, I'll pinch just a little bit of that grey, just to grey it down a little bit. Mix that in with the yellow ochre, a bit of the titanium white. Don't want it to be pure uh, yellow ochre out of the tube. So I'm just greying it off just a little. Okay, and to load the um, palette knife, you just put your finger on the back of it there and just slice through the paint and get a um, get the paint on the back there. And then just along the edge here where the islands would be meeting the water, just run in some sand line there. Don't have to do this in one consistent solid line. Break it up a little bit. Okay. Oh, that one was going uphill a little bit. It's okay. Okay, now if you do get it messed up a bit or not where you want it, just grab a little fan brush and just run that through. Whoop. Got a little bit overboard there, I'll fix that in a sec. You do want it to be a little bit random um, because this is the other side of the island there. And you know this could be anywhere in the world really, but I'm thinking somewhere tropical, somewhere warm. What about that bit of a mess there? Easy. Pull out some of the paint, a little bit of paper towel. Take your fan brush, go into that phthalo blue mix from earlier. And hey presto, whoop, there we go. Okay, that's good. I like mine that. I'll put my little sandbar there. Um, it's a little bit dirty, so again, I'll 
clean off the brush just a little bit. Get some more white into that phthalo blue now. Okay, just pull that in there. Now what I'll do when that dries off a bit, um, I will put in uh, some white um, watermarks and things and that'll sort of soften everything out. Now one thing, um, just as a additional little thing, this little island here might have some villas and things on it. Um, if it was somewhere like in the Greek islands, wouldn't that be nice right now? Just going to take my little flat brush, okay, and just around the base here, just put in what, you know, just some little white marks. I'm not going to say that they're actually villas and things, but just a couple of little white marks where it might look like a little village over there. And we're going to leave it up to the viewer's imagination. We're just suggesting that there's some things happening over there, making them different heights and so on. Okay. And so there are those nice white sort of um, you know, villas that you might find on a Greek island. Just got to be careful because the paint is wet and um, it does pick up a bit of the underpaint as you do that. So pick up a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Again, pick up the grey and just grey it down a little bit. So it's not a pure out of the tube color. And in just a couple of spots, okay, just indicate where there might be some roofs and things like that. Now I'm not gonna do any more than that. It's, I just really wanna indicate that. I don't want it to be the, uh, the main subject that we're painting here. Okay, our next step here now is to put in some sand in the front here, which is going to be our little embankment where we're standing on, and our palm tree is going to come up here. So um, what we need to do is get a mix of, um, really we want alizarin, sorry, we want ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. We'll mix those up. What I'm going for is just a, a darker color. It's not going to turn green really. Um, it's going to get a little bit green, okay, but really just want a darker value, which I'm going to paint in, and then we'll put some sand over that, and we'll put in uh, some bushes and things. So really, we want this embankment to come down through there, like so. And we're just blocking this in now. Very good. Now, we need to get, obviously, the rest of that ocean there. I missed out before. Just need to just pull some of that in. And probably using the big brush is not the best idea. It doesn't matter that I picked up a bit of the colour there um, because there's, you know, the tree is going to dominate that area anyway. And we can fix up any of those little gaps that are there now. In a moment. Okay, now for our sand, 
going to go the yellow ochre and titanium white and I want this to be really on the, the light side of, of it. I want it to be a very light value. Okay, kind of like that. That's probably still a bit too dark. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to run that in along the edges here. It's going to mix with obviously the paint underneath, and that's okay. Um, we'll get, allow a little bit of that, but when it does start to mix, then you want to just clean your brush off and go back and get some more of the paint. Like so. Here we go. Very good. So, next, we need to put our palm tree coming from here down to there. So for that, I'm going to use our phthalo blue. I'm going to use our alizarin crimson and our yellow ochre. Those three colors will make it into a darker color. Careful it doesn't get too much on the red or, or blue side. Take just a little bit of thinner. Okay. I'm just thinning the paint down a little bit. Um, this is where you might see the Bob Ross or Bill Alexander using liquid clear or magic clear. I want to thin it down just so that it will take onto the paint that's already on there. Okay. So pick our spot needs to come from about there, about there, down to there. Okay, you can see how simple that was. Um, probably could make it a little bit thicker, so I'll just run it down and just thicken it out a little bit like so. Okay, might just make, give him a friend that lives here. Make this one just a little bit shorter. And then for our um, leaves, I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to use the same color. And we're just going to pull it down. So we're just going to go and pull the leaves down like so. So the top one's going to be a little bit thinner. Okay. Pretty simple, really. I'm just rolling the brush over as I go. This one at the back, what I'll do with the one at the back, I'll just take just a touch of white into it, just to um, lighten it off a little bit, and just pull his branches into there. That one got a little bit wild, but not to worry. Maybe the wind's blowing. Okay, there we go. So pretty simple. Um, that just gives one side, obviously, of the um, of the palm tree. Have a look at that base there. We might just fix up that base a little bit. Okay, now you can put more palm trees in there if you like, um, or less, up to you. Um, in hindsight. I probably could have put it there a little bit, but I, didn't, I want to leave that gap through to the horizon. See how the horizon line blends with the water? I like that effect um, where you can't tell where the horizon is, but this obviously is an indicator here um, that there's a horizon line there. So now what we'll do is we'll take that yellow ochre and white mix, that one there, and we're just going to go and run it along the uh, trunk of the tree by just pulling it in like so and that gives us the light side of the tree don't pull it all the way across okay leave a dark strip down the other side there
Okay. So that gives the effect of the light hitting on that side of the tree. Come to the little one here. This one you have to be a little bit more careful with. There we go, a little bit more subtle on that side. Now, haven't finished because we need to put some highlights on um, onto those leaves. So I'm using a phthalo blue and cadmium yellow to get a nice bright green. Just mixing that up with the fan brush like so. Okay. And I'm just going to run it over the tops of these 